He's my buddy, uh, Bucky Brooks. Great seeing you again. Hey, thanks for having me back. Okay, so I, I, I said about the Cowboys taking two running backs. They're not star running backs. And they don't have a ton of holes to fill, so I get depth. But there is a part of me that thinks they watch the Rams sign Gurley. Jerry and Stan Kroenke are tight, and they said to themselves, we got a lot of mouse to feed here. We got to have we got to have a little um, ammo when we go into a negotiation with Zeke. They're going to have to pay Jalen Smith. They, they already pay three O linemen. They got to pay Dak. Got to pay Amari. Got to pay just paid Demarcus. I'm not saying it's everything, but drafting two running backs is something, isn't it? Uh, a little bit, but you can tell how much they value the position based on where they drafted them. They drafted them on day three, fourth round and seventh round. Tony Pollard and Mike Weber. So if they really were worried about Ezekiel Elliott, then what you do is you take a guy early that can really, really play. These guys that they drafted, the fourth round Tony Pollard is more of a situational player, a guy that can give you something value in the kick return game. In fact, he played at the same school that the kid for the Rams, uh, Daryl Henderson, played. He's a much better player. Weber, they took him in the seventh round. Really, in the seventh round, you're trying to get guys that you were going to sign as undrafted free agents. You just wanted to make sure that they're there. So these are more depth picks, guys that can spell him for a bit. But make no mistake, the Cowboys are committed to Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott is the guy that makes that offense go. And even though they're going to have to pay Dak, they also will have to pay the running back because he is the one that kind of makes that offense flow. And without him, that offense is different. Let's go to the Cardinals. Uh, I said before, um, I got why they went with Kyler. And selfishly at Fox and NFC Team Arizona, they'll be way more fun to watch. I would have kept Rosen, taken Bosa, and then first pick of the second round, I would have drafted the Mississippi State Center. I'd have an anchor on the D-line, an anchor on the O-line going forward. Would you, if you ran the team, would you have done the quarterback thing all over again? Uh, I mean, it's tough because when you go kind of off the grid and you hire Cliff Kingsbury, that wasn't a traditional hire. He had a losing record at Texas Tech. So you're hiring him to bring this innovative offense. So you want to make sure you give him everything that he wants. I get that. He's been chasing Kyler Murray since he was recruiting him out of high school. Kyler Murray is kind of the perfect fit for this offense. Kyler Murray knows this offense. And what they did in the draft, they basically built – a basketball team around Kyler Murray, meaning if you can envision what the Golden State Warriors are, that's what they put around Kyler Murray. They got guys that can run the wings, Andy Isabella. You have Christian Kirk hanging there. You got post-up players and Hakeem Butler. Then you also get a guy like you have Larry Fitzgerald who's there, and then you got a tight end in Caleb Wilson. So they want to play up-tempo offense. They build an offense for Kyler Murray. However, I will say this about Josh Rosen. I think the Miami Dolphins might have stumbled into their version of Brett Favre. Meaning that years ago when the Green Bay Packers were getting off the ground as Ron Wolf, as Mike Holmgren, Ron Wolf made a trade with the Atlanta Falcons to get Brett Favre. Who was lost in, era, in, in, in Atlanta. For Kinda whatever lost. reason, for whatever reason, it wasn't working. One year in, he picks a guy based on his talent. The Miami Dolphins got a value pick. A guy that was 10th overall. They got him for nothing. A second-round pick, a second-round pick, you're talking about chances of making it in the league maybe 40% and they don't have in terms of doing it. Anything. Aren't paying him anything. Look, I would say the guy has talent. I thought last year he was the top quarterback in terms of the way that he played the game. In Miami, which is going to be a smart offensive system, I can see Josh Rosen playing well. And if they hit on Josh Rosen, it frees them up to do so many other things when it comes to building up their roster. For the Miami Dolphins, it was a no-lose proposition. It was a win-win. Because if he hits, then you go and draft other people with those picks, commit other resources while you have him on a bargain basement deal. Um, I, I ask everybody this. I respect your opinion, number one. Secondly, I think the Raiders overpaid for their free agents and overdrafted most of their players. But they're now in-house, and they're all talented. Mm -hmm. So when I look at the Raiders, I can say overpaid. New England doesn't. I can say overdrafted. The Colts don't. But they got nine dudes in they didn't have before that can play. I kind of think it all works. No, I, I think it works. And I, look, I'm going to give uh, my former colleague, Mike Mayock, a lot of credit. 
what he is attempting to do is something that is hard. To go from the TV booth to being the general manager, the decision maker, is something that is difficult. It's easy on this side to lob opinions and critiques based on what you think of a player. It is harder to make the decision. What Mike and John Gruden did, they decided that they wanted to kind of change the culture in the locker room, okay. meaning that they got foundational pieces. They wanted good football players who had great football character. It's not a coincidence that a lot of those players came from Clemson and Alabama. When you want to win, you go to winning programs. And more importantly, you go to guys who are captains of those teams. Now that's really interesting. Because they're the leaders of the winning program. So now when John Gruden is standing at the room and delivering the message, those guys can carry out the message and hold the teammates accountable. This is a very big thing. Years ago, I got a lot of flack because I went on the air and I said, Connor Cook played at Michigan State. And I said, how in the heck can a senior quarterback, a third-year senior quarterback, not be the captain of his team? Oh, it matters. It matters, okay, it matters, and then a, we, and it matters then we, a lot. And then stories came out. You're like, yeah, okay. That's a really good point. Chris Ballard talks about that. I want guys who led their college teams. Absolutely. It's something that we always look for. Uh, when I was scouting with Carolina, John Fox was a big believer in the captain, uh, multi-sport guys. But the captain of the team means something because he's comfortable standing in front of the team. Typically, if he's been anointed the captain and voted on by his teammates, he is the hardest worker. He is a guy that is respected for how yes. he performs on the field. And so when you're doing the makeover and you're turning over the roster, when you're the Raiders, you want those kind of guys. Winners know how to win. And it makes it a lot easier when you're trying to flip the switch to go. I want great guys that are outstanding workers who know how to win because they're winning to make, they're willing to make the sacrifices necessary to win games. Okay. I'm going to throw this out there. Bucky Brooks. Uh, former NFL defensive back scout, built the Panthers up, uh, uh, built the Seahawks up. So I have been labeled a hater. It's very <laughs> hurtful. It's very hurtful. Um, there's a saying in the NFL, don't collect talent, build teams. Cleveland went and got Greedy Williams. Mm -hmm. Okay. Really good GMs that needed corners passed on him, like the Colts. Uh, guys I respect in the league. So I look at Cleveland, and I got Odell, and I got Jarvis, and I got Greedy, and I got Baker. You know, say what you want. I still don't love my quarterback with police videos. So all I'm saying is this. Is Cleveland building a winner, or are they just collecting talent? Because I Greedy Williams pick, I know he can play. Yeah, they're, they're, they're building a winner. Oh, and okay. This, I want to hear this, this. And this is what I'm going to say. Like, those guys were in Green Bay when I was there. Lonzo Highsmith, John Dorsey. Elliot Wolf is the son of Ron Wolf. And if you looked at the war room on draft night, you know who was there? Ron Wolf. Ron Wolf was sitting in there in the back, tucked away. So what they're doing is what Ron Wolf has always done, and he learned it from Al Davis. You can't go wrong taking a lot of talent. You have to have good players to win in this league. And when you take good players, it enhances your opportunities to win. Now, the pieces of the puzzle have to fit together, meaning they have to be good workers, good teammates. They have to kind of be pulling the boat in the right direction. But you have to have talent. And what the Cleveland Browns have, they have tremendous talent. When you look at their roster, I don't know if you can point to a glaring weakness on their roster. A linebacking core is okay. It, it's okay, but it's not a glaring hole. Joe Sherbert can play. They've had other guys. Christian Kirksey can play. They have solid guys that can play. I think it's a risk in terms of you have a first-time head coach in Freddie Kitchens, and if you hit some adversity, how will they handle it? But, man, you can't go wrong when you try it out. Oda Beckham Jr., Jarvis Landry, you have Nick Chubb in the backfield. And, now, look, it's going to be unpopular, but when Kareem Hunt comes back, he is going to make that offense dynamic. Say what you want to about the pre-draft evaluation on Baker Mayfield. It works for them because Freddie Kitchens put him in an offense that works. Offensive line is solid. Mm -hmm. Then on defense, they benefited from Steve Wilkes being fired in Arizona yeah. and coming in. He's a better defensive coordinator than Greg Williams. They're going to be a better defense. And so this is a team that could be a bully in the AFC North. Yeah. I know you don't like that. I, 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 I don't know. like that. You don't want to see Baker go. But Baker and those guys, no, they're no. going. They're going. But time out. 
Baker Mayfield is welcome any day on this set. <laughs> and I have said before, I, you, you know this. I said he's too good of a passer to be a bust. Oh, he's, he's a solid player. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. Solid I, I will say this about Greedy because you wonder, like, people wonder why Greedy fell. He fell. Why, why, like, good GMs. Toughness, like, nah. toughness and tackle. He doesn't tackle. He didn't tackle. He didn't exhibit toughness. And there were some questions about whether he packed it in at the end of the deal. So now he'll get a chance to go to a right. bright environment with LSU dudes. Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham Jr. By the way. Peer pressure. LSU didn't win a lot of big games. <laughs> All right, finally. I'm going to throw a player at you. All right. There are players that I can see working in New England at a much higher level than they work other places. I just got one guy, Chase Winovich, Michigan. Oh, he's an ideal fit. No, I watched him and I thought to myself, he's going to be so great for New England. <laughs> I think if you threw him on some teams, he'd get lost. Yeah, he. What do you? Can you tell? He's a Michigan kid. What? Like I watched that and I thought that's a classic New England dude. Is a classic dude. A few different reasons. Great motor, great intelligence, very productive. You could argue that he was more productive than the guy that was taken in yeah. the first round, Rashawn Gary. Secondly, people didn't pay attention to his numbers that came out of the combine. One of the top testers when it came to athleticism. So beneath the exterior is a talented athlete. The long hair kind of makes you distracted. Secondly, he fits the mold of the players that have been successful there. Think about Rob Ninkovich, who played the role. Uh, yeah, Hard yes, player yes. off the edge. The thing that I will give credit to the New England Patriots, they understand exactly who they are and who they want on their football team, and they don't deviate. And he is a guy that fits. And overall, this year was different for me because I felt like they drafted name brands. I kind of call it the Warren Buffett theory. Look at the players that they took in the early rounds. Good players, big schools, solid production. Those guys typically work. Good seeing you, Bucky. Thanks for having me. You bet. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.